What's going on guys, Rizzo back with another video and in today's video I go over 1000 rounds of angels that I did and how much I improved over that time. This is over the course of about 8 to 9 days total, roughly around an hour each day, sometimes a little bit more than that as well. I intentionally didn't do any other form of aim training just to see how this actually impacted my aim and how it improved every single aspect of my aim. The last 1000 rounds video I did, a lot of people questioned how is it 1000 rounds you only played 100 players? That was in Realistics, there was 100 different players and there was 10 rounds each. It was 1000 rounds, it's similar here. This is not going against 1000 people, it's 1000 rounds of aim jewels. So overall, this is around 12 hours of aim jewels spread across just over a week. So I'm going to spread this video into just the basics first because I know a lot of people sometimes ask a lot of questions that are very basic, so I'll do that quickly. Then I'm going to go how I set this up and how I'm going to test my improvement, what I learned. Then finally, we'll go with the results and the main takeaways. If you guys like this video, please like the video and subscribe down below and please use code resub in the item shop. Let's get into it. So let's go over some of the basics first. I actually want to just go, what is aim dueling very, very quickly and how'd you get into it? Because in my realistic video, a lot of people ask that. So go over to the portal and just choose the 1v1 aim duel map. Obviously, I already have this uh, saved. The code will be on the screen right now. It's from Raider464. He does so many amazing maps. 85957789 And once you have loaded straight in, you can obviously just do this with a friend if you have someone who also wants to aim train with you. And if you don't have a friend, which clearly I didn't through the entire of this process, I went into the creative matchmaking, which I will show you once this is loaded up. So once you've loaded in, if you're with someone, you just press E and you'll both start and then you can choose your weapons. If you are not with someone, you start the game anyway. If you're just going into the kind of custom matchmaking, you'll start the game, you'll see all the weapons. And if you come over to here, you'll see the matchmaking portal and you hit enter matchmaking. You just wait and it'll find someone. Sometimes it takes a minute to find someone. It'll depend on which server you're on and sometimes it kind of kicks you out. And come back in and most of the time, I'll go through kind of the procedure I did uh, kind of later on, but most of the time I just use blue tactical. Then you can go through some of these health portals, 500, 1000, 2000, 5000, and 10,000. Most of the time people go through 2000 or 5000. So once you go through, there's a ton of different maps that you can choose. The most common is 1v1 with cone, which looks like this. You'll see this familiar a lot of the game. And one person who goes in one portal, the other one goes in the other portal, you just hit start, timer starts, and then you just shoot each other. Simple enough. If you're doing the creative matchmaking, for some reason you can't respawn, so you need to make sure you go into the right portals. There are a ton of other ones in here, as we've already seen. The cone one's good, the ramp one's good, but in all honesty, most people just use these two. 1v1 with cone, 1v1 with ramp. Actually, they also use this normal 1v1 too. So this is the most common ones that people have used, and I used within the video as well. And it really is very, very good at training that inbox aim. So as soon as you jump in, time to go. I'm obviously using this to practice my aim on keyboard and mouse, but you can do it on console, on controller, console, keyboard, mouse, PC controller, mobile, whatever it is, you can use this to train your inbox aim. And it's actually one of the only ways that's really effective for training controller aim in this kind of skull situation. I will let you know that if you go in the random matchmaking and you're on controller, a lot of the times people will leave because you will just absolutely rip them. But let's move on. We've got some more to talk about that later. So how did I set this up to actually make sure I could track it properly? Well, the first thing you should know is that being able to track it on how many wins I had in each round isn't exactly a really good way to track accurate progression of my aim. The reason for this is because I'll be playing completely random opponents and sometimes they'll have better aim than me and sometimes they'll have better aims than the opponents I've faced before and before them or they could be really, really poor. So it's not really that good to track how many rounds I win in comparison to how good my aim is actually getting. If you notice, here's a graph of the last seven days that I did of it and really you can see that there's no real correlation. I started on 50% winning. You can see there's a high point in there where I won 76.9% of them but even on the last day I won 467 and this wasn't because my aim was particularly poor. Honestly, I was just playing a lot of rounds against a guy who had about 5k earnings from keyboard mouse and his aim was just significantly better than mine. So what I did was to try and track the improvements is I did two different scenarios in Kovacs before starting any angels and then I did two after as well. So what I did was I did ascendant tracking v3 and I did five rounds on this day as well and then I got the averages of these scores. Then I did the exact same things on close range strafes Invincible 2. And the reason I did these two in particular is because Ascended Tracking V3 will cover a little bit more of the shorter movements of my crosshair in terms of tracking. And the close range strafes Invincible will track much more of the closer range movement, much more hectic, much faster pace movement of my mouse. So with the scores set, let's get into what I actually learned during this process. The first thing is, don't worry about who you're playing against. 
That's one thing that on the first day became very, very apparent and that I lost a ton of rounds. In all honesty, I played against an Xbox player who was on controller the first time and we played 100 straight rounds. Hi Ben, he comes into my stream. Nice to meet you, hello. And he ended up winning 82 rounds out of the 100. Now, in a lot of things, if you did, for example, realistics and you did 100 rounds and you lost this bad, it would be very, very tilting. But in Angels, you're there just to practice your aim. It doesn't matter if you win, it doesn't matter if you lose. As long as your aim is actually improving, this is what's key. Next part is that Angels are really, really boring. This was something that I did for a long period of time. There was many, many hours that went into behind the research for this video, and it was extremely boring and demotivating. If this is something that doesn't motivate you to play and you can't play a ton of angels a day, honestly, you may be better off practicing aim in a different manner. And we'll come and talk to that a little bit later as well. Movement is something that a lot of people really, really struggle with. It's very, very clear that a lot of people love to crouch spam and just spamming crouch over and over again actually makes you very, very easy to hit. Now you can put a little bit of crouch spamming into your movement every now and then to throw your opponent off, particularly if your opponent's going for a shotgun shot and you duck under so they miss the headshot, but a lot of players spend way too long crouched and what this does is actually slow down your movement. Instead, if you're on keyboard and mouse, for example, you should be holding W and right at some points and this will actually accelerate you very, very quickly and you'll move forward and to the right or forward and to the left very fast and it makes it really hard for your opponents to hit you. Now you don't just want to be doing this all the time, you don't just want to run around them because if you're on keyboard and mouse, for example, you're going to run out of mouse space a lot and you're going to have to keep picking up your mouse and moving it and it's going to make it very difficult for you to track. We can do a combination of just moving to the left, moving to the right and moving in front and around them. Destiny, she just put out a video ages ago on crouch swinging to the right, which is fantastic. It's particular back then when stretch res was in, where you basically crouch spammed and walked forward and to the right. But right now, all honesty, that kind of movement doesn't work too well with normal resolution because you don't really get hidden behind your camera that much unless you get really, really close to them, which definitely can work. But this shouldn't be your only movement when you're in a box. The next thing that people do very, very poorly, and this is really common, is just jump a ton. Raider464 actually made a tweet about this not too long ago, and it reminded me that I was actually going to put this in this video because there are so many opponents that you face that just keep jumping over and over again. This is horrible movement, and it makes you so easy to track and predict. The only time you want to really jump when you're in a box is if you're actually going to jump over the opponent's head. And if you're on low sensitivity, this is going to be really difficult to do, in particular if you're on keyboard and mouse, because if you try to jump over their head, it's going to take a lot of your arm movements to track, and you're probably going to have to reset your mouse back into a normal position. If you're on controller, this works a little bit better, but don't keep doing it because it just becomes extremely easy to predict and you become very easy to track. It throws off your aim, and it doesn't really throw off the person who doesn't jump aim either. So when you're in a box in a real life situation, moving forward and to the right or forward and to the left is probably by far the best way to do this. Crouch spamming will slow you down, but remember, if you're in a real life situation, you've only got 200 HP at maximum, so it's not like an angel where you have 2000 where you can keep running around them over and over again. If you run forward and to the right, it makes your aim so much easier to track because you don't have this awkward movement. Remember, if you're walking to the right and then you have to walk to the left, you have to change your crosshair again. And this is just a very minor tip that makes things a little bit more difficult for you to keep tracking. So if you're in a box, keep your movement simple, keep it fast and make it difficult for your opponent to hit you by continually walking forward and to the right. If you're on a controller and you have that beautiful 360 movement, exactly the same thing applies. Walk forward and to the right and you can just keep hitting shots after shot by running around your opponent. Remember, crouching and jumping slows down your movement and makes you predictable to hit. So how much did I improve while doing this? Well, firstly, let's look at the Kovac scores. To start with, on the Ascended Tracking version 3, my best score was 7013. Now, this is actually a really poor score. Obviously, I'm learning keyboard and mouse, and I had never really done Kovac on this beforehand. We'll get to that in a later video, though, which I'll be working on after this. So I started on 7013.1, and I ended up going down to 6,253.6. So in the ascended tracking version three, I actually went down by 10.8%. Now it's actually very easy to have a big fluctuation in your scores from day to day anyway. So just the fact that I went down 10% on this ascended tracking version three, it honestly does not mean that much. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm not reading too much into it. But if we look at the close range strafes invincible, which reflects the aim dueling much more, I actually increased my score from 11,088 in the average across the five rounds up to 11,887. So it went up by 7.2% in that exact situation. So what can I take away from this? Well, to start with, doing a ton of angels definitely helped my end game, even though if the scores didn't reflect it that much in terms of the ascended tracking ones in particular, but my end game aim definitely felt much better when I was in this inbox situation. So as soon as I was in there, I felt very familiar, it felt very comfortable, definitely hit some really, really good shots. 
Outside of that, did it help my aim that much? No, not at all. And that actually kind of reflects in the Kovac scores. Aim jewels help you in this very specific situation when you're in the box and you can consistently hit those shots over and over again, but they don't do everything for your aim. You have to aim train more outside of that. And I'm going to be covering that in a future video because I've been doing stuff like I've already hinted at since this video has come out. I've been doing a ton more aim training and I'm really excited for that video. So keep an eye out on that in the later ends of the week. What other way could I possibly test my aim? How about going against a pro player in some aim duels? Yo, hello. yo, yo, what's going on? Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. I know it's, I know it's a, this is like World Cup 2.0, but. <laughs> Make sure your hands aren't sweating, you know, it's all right. <laughs> oh, it's tragic. It's tragic. Oh, okay. How close are we? Oh, 1460. Okay, nowhere near. <laughs> No! Oh how close? How close? 100 to hell! There's no way. There's no way. Oh. Your movement's so annoying. I can't hit you, man. This is the point I was trying to make about good movement. Notice how I was just consistently walking forward and to the right and going around him and then coming back the other side. Benji himself said it's hard to hit at that point, so it's definitely kind of movement you want to be employing. Overly crouching makes things way too difficult. My movement was simple and it works. If only my aim was the same as my movement. After doing five or six more rounds with the tack, where I lost obviously every single one of them, usually with around between 500 to 1000 HP left, so not the worst. You know what? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Moved on to using the SMG. Okay, so it's the, okay, we're, we're still the same, we're still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were using SMG, we did about another seven rounds, and again, I didn't manage to clutch up and win any of them at all, unfortunately. But it was actually getting much closer with the SMG, which was interesting to me, because that showed me that my tracking was better with the ARs and the SMG than it is over the TAC, which is something I've seen very, very consistently, because my click timing's really bad. I want to really thank Benji for hanging out, doing this with me. It was very, very appreciative of him. Benji is just as nice of a guy in person as he seems on the internet. Okay can't speak any higher of him, so big thanks to him. So would I recommend doing one hours of aim jewels every single day? No, probably not. Your time is probably spent better doing some other form of aim training in combination with doing aim jewels at the end. If you're gonna spend, for example, on keyboard and mouse, I'd probably recommend 20 to 30 minutes on Kovacs, potentially 40, a bit of the Scavax aim map, and then doing ending with 20 minutes of aim jewels as well, such as No Rally's routine, which was shown by Destiny's Jesus, Aim Jewels is fantastic for getting your inbox aim better, but that is not every single component of your aim. And I definitely found that this has not translated that well into my game unless I get straight into a box. I've been doing a ton more aim training since finishing this about a week ago, and my aim has significantly improved way more than it did doing this. So I'm definitely going to follow that up on Friday's video. I hope it'll be out on Friday. We will see. So yeah, not necessarily what I'd recommend, but doing Aim Jewels every day as part of an aim training routine, I would 100% recommend. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. I've been Resub. Peace.